Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and ready to become epic art designers in around 10 minutes. Yes, you heard me right. Today I am going to explain how you can install and use the only freely, fully open source AI based art generator on your PCs. If you are wondering what is an AI art generator, then in simple words, it is the use of AI to convert your imaginations into an image. The only thing you have to do is imagine and describe your imagination in words. The AI art generator will convert those words into images. The AI art generator that we are going to use is called Stable Diffusion. It is the only free and totally open source AI art generator you can get your hands on. All the images which you have seen till now in this video were generated on this platform. Isn't it great? Before we install Stable Diffusion, one thing I want to call out is you can also just use it on the web if you just want to experiment with it. Simply go to StableDiffusionWeb.com and you'll land on this page. Scroll down a bit to get to Stable Diffusion Playground. You can write anything which comes to your mind, for example, an insect-like robot making breakfast, and I want the image to be high quality and deep and sharp colors. That's it. Click Generate, wait a bit, and here you go. Not bad at all. Here are the four images which Stable Diffusion has generated for you. Now there are so many options with which you can play with, but of course you don't have much freedom in the online version. By clicking on advanced settings, you may see some tweaking options, but there's a lot more if you have Stable Diffusion installed on your PC. Before we can install it on PC, we want to make sure that the PC is even capable of running Stable Diffusion. The only requirement is a dedicated GPU. You can check it by opening the task manager. You can press Ctrl, Shift and Escape all together. And once open, you on the second tab of performance, at the left side, scroll all the way down to see if there's NVIDIA or AMD written over here. If yes, then that's good news. And we are good to go. To use Stable Diffusion, we need to get two different prerequisites. The first one is called Git. You can click on the link right above or can find it in the description below. And then on this page, click on this link to start the download. Once you have finished the download, click on the file and start the installation. And you can stick with all the defaults. Git is something like a source manager which we are going to use to manage, download and keep our stable diffusion updated. The second prerequisite that we need is Python. You can click on the link right up above or you can find it in the description below. This drops us to this landing page and here you can see that its version is 3.10.6 which is the latest one at the time of making of this video and is suitable for running Stable Diffusion. If you scroll all the way down on this page, here you'll see the installers. Here I'll click on this one and start the download. Once you finish downloading, click on the install file. During the installation process, make sure to check this box next to add python.exe to path. This will make it easier to run the various Python scripts. Python is a programming language on which Stable Diffusion is written. And to run it, we need this programming language. Now that we have all the prerequisites out of the way, we are now ready to install Stable Diffusion. And we are going to install a fork called WebUI. It happens to be the most popular fork. This fork will give you a nice graphical interface so that anyone can use it easily. Moreover, it has been optimized to run on the consumer grade hardware. To install Stable Diffusion, create a folder named Stable Diffusion at any suitable location on your PC. For example, I have made it in my D drive. Inside this folder, click on the address bar and type CMD. This opens up command prompt and we now need to get all the Stable Diffusion files and we are going to use git to do that. Remember we installed git earlier? Here you could type in git and then clone. We are going to create a copy or a clone of the repository of the Stable Diffusion present on this link. Copy and paste the URL here and press enter to start cloning. You can find the link in the description as well. Now that we have cloned the repository, if we click back into the file explorer, you'll see that there is now a new folder called Stable Diffusion Web UI. And if you click into that, you'll see all the associated repository files. Next, we need to download the model or a checkpoint. You could click on the link right above or find it in the description below. On this page, scroll down a little bit and right here we see the download link for the checkpoint or the model. And there are two different versions that you can choose from. There's one that's 4.27 gigabytes and there's another that's 7.7 .7 gigabytes. The larger model is obviously better, but the smaller one wouldn't be that bad. 
and for beginners it doesn't matter which model you use later on you may download as many other models as you want and use them for our generation different models are trained on different data for example one model may be best for generating anime while the other for close up human faces and yet another for non living things for the time we are sticking to the base model once you finish downloading the model rename the file to a simple name such as model and move it from your download folder to the stable diffusion folder in that go to stable diffusion web ui folder and then to the models folder in here you'll find a folder named stable diffusion open it up and paste the model file over here we now have all the files that we need to be able to run stable diffusion now go a bit back in the folders to the stable diffusion web ui folder and scroll all the way down to find this file called web ui dash user dot bat let's select the file and then right click on it we are going to make one optimization to ensure that we always have the latest and greatest version of stable diffusion right click it and select edit this opens up notepad and at the very top of the file let's insert an additional line and here let's type in git pull this way it will always pull down the latest version of the stable diffusion web ui repository every time you start the program save the file by pressing control and s and close this file all right we are now ready to launch the stable diffusion right here where we have that web ui dash user dot bat let's double click on that file stable diffusion now need to install various dependencies to be able to work and this will take a little bit of time so feel free to go off and do something else and check back in a little while to follow up the progress make sure you have active internet connection in this time for me it took around an hour to finish setting up don't worry it will take this long for the first time only it's now finished installing right here we see a url you can select this and then press control c to copy and we are going to paste this into our browser in your web browser go to the address bar and then paste this url that you just copied from the command prompt this will open up stable diffusion web ui over here you can drop this list down and select the model which you have in your folder right now we downloaded only one model so it is only showing over here and then over here in this text to image tab you can write any prompt over here whatever you write over here and when you press this generate button this stable ui is going to convert this text into an image after that over here you can write negative prompts as well this means all the things which you do not want to be included in your image so you can write those things over here as well after that if you come down there are different sampling methods all sampling methods are efficient for generating different kind of images you can choose or you can experiment with all of them when you get the time right now i'm sticking with the base one then we have the sampling steps that is for how many times this stable diffusion is going to refine your image so the default is 20 that's a good number or you can increase it but definitely it will take more time after that if you come down there is the width and the height that is what image size you want to create by default it is 512 by 512 you can change this size as per your wish and then over here there is batch count batch count means that how many images you want to generate at a time by default it is one so it is going to generate only one image and show that image to you if you increase it to for example four then now it is going to generate four images in one go and right beneath it there is batch size i don't recommend increasing this batch size anything greater than one because it means that how many images are processed concurrently or simultaneously so I would suggest that keep it to one so that stable diffusion process one image at a time and until it gets four that is your batch count it will keep on working one by one at a time then after that you have CFG scale this number means that how much you want stable diffusion to stick to your prompt the higher the number the more closer the image will be to your prompt and the lower the number more freedom stable diffusion will have and it can give you much more things so if you have very very perfect prompts then you can increase this scale to a higher number but if you have just some pointers then i would recommend to use a lower number anything between 7 to 14 is good for beginners beneath this we have the seed if you have minus one over here every time you are going to click generate button 
the image which stable diffusion is going to show you will be a random one otherwise you can type in any number for example 50 then it will always show you the 50th output whenever you press the generate button stable diffusion is going to generate or work on millions and millions of images you can see any one of them if you have minus one under the seed it will show you a random image but if you have 50 over here it will always show you the 50th one or if you have 5000 or 50000 it will show you the 50th 1000th one always so i would suggest we keep minus 1 over here and we are pretty much done the last option which i want to explain is if you have any human faces in your images and they are coming out a bit distorted you can select this option and stable diffusion will work a bit more on the faces to restore them so for the time being i'm not going to press it and that's it now just we have to write some prompt over here and click generate and see what this stable diffusion is going to give us. There are many other things on in this offline version of stable diffusion. For example, you go in, you can go into the settings and there are a lot of settings for you to explore from where you can use the upscaling, you can use the face restoration and many other things. You can generate incredible amount and incredible details using these options. But for this video, we are going to stick with the base things. So I'm going to write the same prompt over here, which we did in the online version. And, and that was an insect robot preparing breakfast. And I want it to be high quality with deep and sharp colors. Moreover, I don't want low quality results. So I have entered low quality over here or, or anything which is blur and poor contrast. Now I have to just click on generate. Wait a bit. If you interrupt it, it will give you the output up to what it has worked on right now. And if you skip it, it will skip on the current image on which it is working and will start working on the next image. Because we wanted four images, so it will work one by one and will generate four different images. So here are the four images which Stable Diffusion has generated for us. If you click on this first one, it will show you all four in a collage. Whereas you can click on any individual one and you can see that these images are of quite high quality and are very nice. So you can select any one and you can further work on them. Or you can just click on generate once again to see what other four options Stable Diffusion spit out for you. Or concurrently, you can increase this batch count to any higher number or a lower number to get some other things. So I hope now you can become a great AI artist using Stable Diffusion. Don't forget to watch our next video in which I am going to explain how you can use ChatGPT to generate some great prompts so that ChatGPT can help you out in generating prompts and Stable Diffusion can generate much more detailed and excellent artwork using your prompts from ChatGPT. Thank you and take care.